Brooklyn Independent Television. Hi everybody, I'm Ron Dodd. Welcome to Brooklyn Review. The Domino Sugar Refinery is the gateway to Williamsburg and a proposed $1.2 billion makeover for the site could bring about affordable housing and a re-energized waterfront. But some area residents say the deal is not as sweet as it sounds. Sherry Carabin reports. It was standing room only at a recent community board one meeting at 211 Ainsley Street in Williamsburg as residents gathered to learn details of a developer's proposal for the former Domino Sugar site. We wanted to be respectful to the fabric of the existing community. It was very important to us that we not uh, create something that looked like it had landed from outer space or Miami on the south side waterfront of Brooklyn. It should look like it was an organic part of the Brooklyn neighborhood that we were coming to. As for what it will look like, developers gave those at the meeting a virtual tour of sorts. They say their plans for the site would include about 2,200 residential units, 660 of which would be affordable to low- and moderate-income households, almost 1,700 parking spaces and commercial and retail space, including office space. They also promise community facility space and about four acres of public open space, including an esplanade along the water's edge linking the project site to Grand Ferry Park. Ideas that are music to the ears of some residents. I think it's a great opportunity for our community. It offers open space and affordability across, across the board. Knowing that I lived in the almost four block radius for the last 58 years, I've seen Schaefer bottles go by, I've seen Domino produce sugar in this refinery, uh, absolutely amazed. This is a dream that I had when I served on this board uh, 20 years ago when Kent Avenue looked like Fort Apache. What's important about this is what you see is what you get. But not everyone is so sure about that statement. I think actually the presentation is a tad cynical. There's an emphasis on the affordable units and open spaces, but there's, in my opinion, been a de-emphasis on the, problem, the portions of the plan that will help to displace or contribute to a massive displacement in the neighborhood. The proposed project includes an almost 10-acre waterfront parcel bounded by the East River, Grand Street, Kent Avenue, and South 5th Street, along with about 1.3 acres upland, surrounded by Kent Avenue, South 3rd Street, Wythe Avenue, and South 4th Street. From the 1850s until recently, the area was home to sugar processing operations. It was operated by Domino Sugar until 2001, when the Domino brand was acquired by American Sugar Refining. American Sugar ceased operations in 2004. It's really an area that for a long time went underdeveloped, um, in a sense that it was only, you know, catering to the sugar plant, and, but even the history itself gives, you know, it spoke of, it spoke of an opportunity. It gave community residents opportunity to work here and call this place home while also earning a living here. When the factory closed down, it took away that hope and that possibility, and this project seems to be offering a little bit of that again. The project site is adjacent to the approximately 184 block area in Greenpoint and Williamsburg that was rezoned in 2005 to allow for residential and mixed residential industrial uses. In the case of Domino, zoning variances will be needed once again, since it's currently zoned for heavy industrial and manufacturing and limited commercial uses. Developers will need to get those variances in order to build, and they were looking to convince community board members to green light those changes. We think that we have come up with a proposal that's really offering the community a tremendous amount. 30% of affordable housing, 660 units is twice as much as 50% more than anybody else is required to do, and we are cross-subsidizing all of those affordable units. We're providing them at lower income levels than is required, and that's very expensive. We're doing a lot of very expensive items. We're asking we think for very little in return in order to be able to make the project work economically. While much of it sounds good, opponents like Phil DiPaolo, president of the New York Community Council, question exactly how much it really would benefit the community. A lot of issues providing the lack of school spacing, the lack of fire service, the lack of police service, the issues with sanitation, and also the issues with the so-called 660 affordable units that the developer is claiming. Our research has found that only 100 of those 660 units are actually affordable 
to the community district one area median income, which is about $35,000. So, you know, when they say affordable housing, what we see is mostly out of reach housing. The project is scheduled to be developed in six phases. If all goes according to plan, developers would break ground on the first phase sometime in 2011. And I'm very proud, I'm proud of them, proud of this community, and I hope this community board uh, goes along with it and passes it with flying colors. But if the recent February 23rd vote by the community board's land use committee is any indication, developers are in for a rough ride. The committee voted five to three to reject the proposal. The full board is expected to vote on the issue at the next meeting on March 9th, with opponents predicting a similar outcome. In Williamsburg, this is Sherry Carabin reporting for Brooklyn Review. After the full Community Board 1 vote, Borough President Marty Markowitz will make recommendations before it goes to the Department of City Planning. We'll keep you posted. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.